Hello everyone, welcome to Playthings, Newsclick's weekly sports show. Yeah, it's a big day. It's, uh, we saw a victory on the playing field in the test match. India beat New Zealand quite soundly that too. So obviously, we'll be playing, uh, we will be talking about cricket today. But yeah, there's a difference as well because we'll be talking a slightly beyond cricket too. Because the roster has changed and we have a guest in the studio. Uh, Mr. Pradeep Magazine is a very senior journalist who has just now published his latest book, uh, which is on cricket and also it's also a memoir of a chronicle of the days that he has spent covering cricket, uh, Indian cricket and that too with a so social and political context. It's, it's billed as a history of contemporary India and uh, Pradeep Magazine, uh, sir, welcome. Thank you. It's great Thank to you. have you in the studio. Thank and you so much for, for having me here on this discussion. And uh, congrats on the book to start with. <laughs> start with that. Yeah, it's it's. I have, I have to say, I have to admit to have started reading it, and it's a it's a very engrossing read as well. Again, I've I've glanced through the chapters. I've seen that you have written quite a bit on Indian captains during the time during the time you spent as a journalist on the field, and two of them happen to be the right at the thick of things, helm of things right now in Indian cricket. So let's and since it's a day that we saw India beat. New Zealand on the playing field. Uh, let's start with Dravid, I guess. So, because you have written about him, you have dedicated chapters to uh, Dravid as well as Ganguly, well, who is heading the <laughs> BCCI. See, so their, their cricketing life uh, is well documented. Mm -hmm. Both great cricketers, David, a great test player, perhaps among the best India has ever had or the world has ever had. Ganguly, we know as a leader what he did, what he achieved. Now he is the board president, as you say, and Dravid is the Indian team yeah. coach. So that uh, relationship which was there in uh, earlier times as players are, is now transformed into administrative roles. My book uh, uh, is about, when I talk about cricket, these are my memoirs, these are anecdotal mm -hmm. memoirs in the sense that I don't go into areas which I have not seen and I have not been witness to. Yeah. And since uh, uh, cricket is so well documented in India, scorecards and matches, so I don't go into that. What I go into is uh, how I have seen these relationships, uh, this interplay between cricketers, between captains, between coaches of my period, whenever I co uh, covered cricket, and how it affects them and how it affects the team. So, for instance, I, I, I talk about Gavaskar and Kapil Dev relationship. Mm -hmm. Again, on anecdotal evidences, yeah. I talk about uh, Sachin and uh, Azhar uh, mm -hmm. era, their relationships. Again, as I said, purely on anecdotal yeah. terms of my interactions with them, what I saw, what I uh, felt uh, was happening. Then it goes to Dravid Ganguly. So, if you you are asking me about Dravid, well, Dravid, uh, from the book's perspective, Dravid is a captain who is who becomes captain after Ganguly goes in uh, controversial yeah. circumstances when the coach Greg Chappell accuses him of of dividing the team or disruptor, as he is called, and uh, Dravid takes over. The team is not not in in harmony because mm -hmm. of these uh, divisions. So I talk about that. I talk about my interventions in, in, in there. There is a chapter on Dravid where, uh, where his coach is uh, telling uh, a journalist that I don't want uh, certain key players, players like Tendulkar in the team. So you write about it and don't, like write a source-based story that uh, how uh, mm -hmm. how they are not needed in the team yeah. instead of taking my name. And this is, happens in Pakistan when Dravid is leading India. And I come to know about it because that journalist, young journalist, Siddharth mm -hmm. Vedyanathan comes to me. He's young, he's disturbed. Yeah. Uh, India has lost a test match series to Pakistan and then the coach is talking like this. So my interaction with Dravid, what I tell him. And... Uh, so I kind of document that relationship with three of them. And before that, when Wright becomes the coach, I try to document what I've seen of Wright. Uh, 
mm-hmm. how John Wright was, how he introduced new concepts, how difficult it was, what sort of a person he was, what his relationship was with Ganguly. It may not have been always a very harmonious relationship, but it was not a disrupting relationship. So all these incidents are there in terms of not my interpretation as opinion pieces, Mm -hmm. but I see through this, I stitch this story through action, uh, through talks, what I've uh, talked, what I've seen, Seen, what what they are. So that's how this whole book actually I've structured. Mm -hmm. That's interesting when you mentioned Ravid and his, his time as skipper. Because uh, again, now he's a coach and also probably will oversee a period where this transition happens when hard calls calls about which senior players should be in the mix, which who shouldn't be, will uh, have to be taken. So, uh, and can you, I mean, can you just comment on, on Dravid's personality, what you have seen and how, how is he likely to... Look, I, 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 I will. Uh, I'll uh, take you to the book for for, mm-hmm. for for the question. You and my answer would be that Dravid, as a captain, is well aware. I think of the of 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 the pitfalls of the senior, junior, and 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 the relationships, and how a captain has eleven or twelve or fourteen uh, cricketers with him, whom he has to lead. All of them are of. Obviously, uh, no one person is this. Uh, no two yeah. persons are the same. They're different people with different backgrounds, different understanding of situations. So when Ganguly in uh, 2004, I think, was when Australia came here, and uh, there was this Test match at Nagpur, which had which had a green wicket, and he withdraws overnight in the match because of injury, and Dravid has to lead. Mm-hmm. I am covering that match and uh, somehow I get this impression or I am told that uh, people feel that Ganguly has withdrawn from the test, uh, yeah, not a, because of injury yeah. but because he didn't want to play on that green top and India lose that match very badly. So I try to probe further, I, I come to know, I, I, I talk to uh, Dravid himself and uh, there is this, I realize that yes, there is this feeling with some cricketers in the team. I convey this to Ganguly with the intention of making him aware that, look, he needs to reach out to his team, what they are feeling about. And and I write a, two stories in my paper. I'm working with Hindustan Times then. A very, I, I, I don't want to write directly what I have I have had mm-hmm. uh, like what uh, what are my sources or yeah. what I base my uh, story Stories on, on. <laughs> but I do write very cleverly one piece in which I which appears on page one, where I write that Ganguly some play, players are suspecting that Ganguly mm-hmm. withdrew not yeah. because of injury but because he chickened out. Then I write a second piece uh, which I in a way appeal to Dravid to the new captain because uh, Dravid mm. becomes the captain for the next test match yeah. because he's uh, injured. Ganguly is, has mm. not recovered. Where I appeal to Dravid that, look, leading a side comes with very different problems. It's like you are, a, uh, like I have been a sports editor or or in the newspaper, there are 10 people. Uh, everyone has his own uh, views issues and, and views and everyone thinks that he should be given. Uh, primacy over the others and there's a tensions and handling them is not an easy job. So I, I, I appeal to Dravid that he should have a more holistic view of what has happened uh, because it's not easy. When he becomes the captain, he will realize that. And actually when Dravid becomes the captain, there are a lot of tensions in the team as, as was evident when everyone mm-hmm. knows how, uh, how India lost in the 2007 World Cup with Dravid yeah. as the captain. It couldn't even qualify for the next stage. It was, it was a, uh, one of the biggest upsets in World Cup cricket. So Dravid uh, obviously must have and has matured enough. He has this experience of how to deal with these tensions. Mm-hmm. And he has been now placed, as you say, in a situation where he will have to He's not the captain now, not so yeah. directly, but as a coach, you have uh, Virat Kohli as captain in one format. You have now Rohit Sharma mm-hmm. as uh, captain in different formats. Format, and there yeah. is speculation that uh, Rohit Sharma may lead India in one, one day as, as well. well yeah. So how to handle these uh, egos as John Wright was 
says uh, in a conversation with me which is in the book that uh, these are rock stars and <laughs> and if you tell them directly that don't do this don't do that they get upset i have to find a way in which i tell them also what to do but i don't make them feel as if uh, i am trying to uh, instruct them or i am trying to change their style i make them uh, believe feel that look they need to do that and there are times when they come to me tell me exactly that hey john i have decided to do this as if okay. it's their uh, they have decided though it is right who has very cleverly placed those thoughts in their yeah. mind so i i'm sure dravid uh, is a is a sensible man he's a responsible man and uh, he's matured enough now to handle these situations uh, it's quite a uh, really diplomacy is one of his key areas attention to detail plus whatever the game game insights that he brings in onto the table uh, again the second uh, second uh, name that i mentioned sort of ganguly is i mean they are they are uh, in a way working in conjunction <laughs> and i would i mean did you have any inkling towards i mean when you saw ganguly first initially also and as a skipper that he would become the kind of administrator that he has no, become now no definitely no and ganguly has been one of the most remarkable uh, characters uh, in my uh, cricketing journey i have uh, seen interacted with in fact uh, uh, one of those rare cricketers i have been interacted and uh, known more than uh, most of the others at one stage i was uh, intending to write his biography with mm-hmm. his consent i i have talked to his parents uh, he's allowed me that he allowed me that access uh, mm-hmm. been to his house been talked to his friends at that time and i the biography didn't happen but i had a lot of access, access a lot of information and uh, there was a time when uh, since uh, during greg chapel he spat with him i initially probably was among the very few journalists who who backed uh, yeah, okay. ganguly and 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 wrote that greg is not the right thing to have yeah, happened yeah. to indian cricket so i have had lot of interactions with him which are recorded in the book i i i the, the complexity of saurav ganguly coming from a rich background and and uh, not being one of the fittest of cricketers and 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 nobody thought that he would become uh, india's captain and nobody believed even the players and administrators didn't believe that uh, this is the right decision mm-hmm. to have taken to made him the captain uh, some people saw him as a selfish man but but he uh, proved everyone wrong everyone knows that he led india remarkably mm-hmm. well earned the respect of his uh, cricketers so i document that how his relationship with john right i also document this whole disruption what happened Which to happened him personally it. there are certain intimate uh, details because of my access to, mm-hmm. to the to, he provided yeah. to his family to to himself which i don't think have been uh, written about before yeah. so he's a fascinating character and uh, now he is the president of the yeah, indian so control board uh, quite fascinating uh, very powerful it. man uh, unfortunately he has a secretary who probably is far more powerful because <laughs> yeah. of his uh, political connections mm-hmm. so but still uh, his relationship with dravid during that period lot of people felt was not good some people felt that it was the uh, it was a creation of uh, media writing yeah. and uh, here again uh, ganguly has got dravid as indian coach so it's it's, a, it's, it's a very interesting, interesting uh, development yeah. yes and uh, it's a, it's an evolution also uh, i mean uh, next step in indian cricket is un, uh, under these two stalwarts exactly, of indian exactly. cricket it's, so it's, it's, it's so at, uh, one way to look at it is that it's great that cricketers have a bit of a say in in the future of indian cricket other way to look at it is that uh, ganguly's actions as bcci president or the priorities that he has set uh, like you mentioned secretary is more powerful than the president as well so probably there is a power mix decisions are being made with the consensus of the other parties involved in that you know how the elections were held in in the bcci and how exactly. how how the compromise formula was arrived and also also unfortunately uh, lodha commission's uh, 
recommendations or or Supreme Court mandated recommendations. Mm-hmm. It's the Supreme Court which yeah. had said that these changes have to be made. Though they've been made, but then uh, it, it. The, it's the old way functioning because yeah, they yeah. they've amended the constitution. The the case is now gone to court again, and court has so far not taken any decision. So the board is being run the way it used to be uh, used to run, be. except for the fact that because of those changes, uh, uh, a cricketer yes, became yes, the board president. Yeah. And so that's that's what I was. Uh, I wanted to again get get into it now that you have mentioned the BCCI as well as cricket and how it was run earlier. So generally, the games direction that you have seen in the past thirty years or in, through your career, as well as where it is now, and why do you perceive the game's future is because the way uh, we look at it as as journalists now, as current journalists, crickets. Uh, I mean, I would I would probably be using a slightly harsh word, but sanctity of the sport is in question because of the control that the BCCI and the top two other boards in the world, English and the Australian boards, they have on the international game and how that is affecting the growth of the game and also to a larger larger extent democracy in the game. So, uh, and it's all, uh, there is a direct connection to how money has also come in into the game and money with certain people only so uh, the evolution just 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 wanted to well, have an uh, when i i started uh, reporting on cricket in uh, 80s early 80s and uh, india was a marginal uh, player in international cricket it wasn't a very strong team but that apart it 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 subcontinent teams like Pak- uh, pakistan india lanka had no uh, hold or no power in the uh, international cricket conference because india didn't have uh, that kind of a cloud because of the money now the whole thing has changed after uh, live television broadcasting rights uh, having uh, made board richer and richer with ipl even more richer india is now far more powerful than uh, england uh, probably yeah. ever was when yeah. when the it was controlled yeah. by say england australia nexus I think India is now what what India used to accuse them. Now they can also rightfully accuse India of being the big bully. They and, have been doing that. Uh, and they've been doing that. <laughs> they've been doing that. There was a time when uh, Mr. Jagmohan Dalmia, when he was the board president and when he also became the ICC president, he turned the whole thing upside down. And there was huge public support. I remembered in 2002 in uh, in. Or 2001 in South India were in South Africa when five six Indian players were banned for a couple of matches and Tendulkar was accused of ball tampering. There was a big ruckus and India withdrew. Uh, India threatened mm-hmm. to withdraw. India used all its cloud. muscle and clout where the ICC had to bow to India's wishes. So, uh, there is a chapter on South Africa in this book. Which uh, which refers to the South African society and India and and uh, and and uh, to to a place because I I've written about the, my visit to Gandhi's Phoenix settlement mm-hmm. and, uh, and 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 the black Indian relationships. So I I write that uh, how India used its muscles and in a in a land where Gandhi uh, was actually transformed himself uh, from a lawyer to to. Uh, to a yeah. future revolutionary yeah. or a future uh, visionary, there the money game was fought, but it had no ethical basis. Like if if Gandhi uh, laid emphasis on on uh, on the on ethical basis mm-hmm. of everything, that the process itself should be clean. The end, if it is arrived through a process which is unethical, it's not the right thing. And I say that that reverse was happening. That that ethics had no meaning in this in this fight mm-hmm. everything was money. decided by which side had more money so from 2000 to now it has multiplied many fold ipl has uh, the kind of uh, broadcasting rights sale of ipl has made india far richer than it was it ever was and and because of that uh, among the many things which has affected the game, what is to a traditionalist a more important or a more disturbing development is how test cricket is likely possibility of it getting more and more marginalized because 
so much money is uh, involved with the T20 cricket players are getting so much of money ipl is like like no cricketer needs to play any other thing apart from who uh, ipl because they make money like 10 crores 15 crores top cricketers in 3 months which most of the cricketers worldwide can't make even in a lifetime so since the temptation the money is so huge they would all prefer to play ipl or t20 cricket which which then because it's managed by television and by businessmen it will keep on expanding and it will eat up whatever little space is left for test cricket and test cricket is important for cricket's future it's important plays uh, if you talk to any player he will say test cricket is something which is special to him because of the skills involved are 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 deeper are more difficult and, and the challenges are more difficult but he would prefer to play ipl because that's where the money is flex of money into cricket into the game as also reflected on our trade it's uh, uh, it our trade is also journalism is also sports journalism is also at a crossroads in india and uh, Uh, i believe you have to a end of your career not you have expressed your displeasure uh, at to the direction that that things were things well were i i uh, i quit as a sports editor of hindustan times i resigned in uh, 2000 uh, immediately after 2007 world cup and uh, i was relatively young in the sense that i was only 50 and uh, but i had had enough of 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 the pressures of uh, of handling uh, people and handling marketing and handling so many other pressures that i decided it's not worth being part of it and uh, i became a, like a consultant freelancer that too i was lucky that the paper said no you write your columns and but i because these pressures are difficult to handle and uh, when you're young maybe you can and and since i had seen a different era where where the temptation uh, and it was an individual who would who, who didn't have these pressures of marketing advertising and uh, and uh, other things if 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 he had to uh, report honestly he could mm-hmm. but now it's Almost so different important. that uh, uh, good luck to people who are uh, <laughs> working in these uh, circumstances good luck indeed and uh, we also we are test match players here because we always have a time <laughs> time issue so uh, uh, my producer has been waving that uh, our time slot is almost over so i'll get to the most important part of the discussion which i badly wanted to ask you as well is about the about the connections that you have made while covering the game the social context the political context and also your memoir the memoir the 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 deeply felt memories that you have uh, brought onto the pages of this book and uh, you uh, started off with kashmir and it's your it's your uh, that's where your roots are and you ended the book with kashmir as well and uh, uh, as you know it's it's this uh, uh, the turmoil still is on and uh, now uh, living in delhi and looking at it and since you, since you feel so deeply about the place and you have written about it as well so what do you look at when you look at it what do you see about look i decided the book to be like this there is a lot of kashmir in it there is a lot of pakistan my visits to it which uh, yeah. and, and and kashmir back again punjab terrorism because i i happen to be a kashmiri i have uh, uh, spent a bit of childhood there i used to go back there i lived uh, during the terrorism period in uh, punjab i have seen uh, those things i have seen how how mandal agitation took place all these things have influenced me and all these things are in the book there's a bit of history in it uh, uh, and, and mm-hmm. again anecdotal uh, not from an academic point of view but from an, an, an anecdotal point of view what the situation was at that time socially politically how it was how the middle cla- classes reacted to mandal the babri masjid mm-hmm. demolition uh, terrorism how we covered cricket uh, at that period mrs gandhi's assassination what was the atmosphere among mm-hmm. uh, the relationship between sikhs and hindus and uh, there are there are a lot of things in the book which are non cricketing uh, which are deeply uh, at least i am deeply uh, uh, was influenced by those events and i i tried to portray them as i felt 
how it changed me because you you are a animal of the societal animal and wherever you are living whatever is happening around you is bound to affect you change you so i i go into those things and i i hope uh, people and you will find them engrossing readable it is because uh, sport without context is meaningless in itself because it was celebrate victories and losses just like that it's 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 great it's it's good for good for celebrations uh, alone but beyond that what is the meaning of that that is what in fact play things we the end, full name of the show is play things with alien forces so <laughs> it's uh, the forces that control sport and beyond so we generally try to look at all these factors into it and in that sense your book delving into the the rich fabric of context that cricket carries itself around the game around and which you have felt and noticed that's 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 a, it is it would be an enclosing read as i said so uh, thanks for sharing such insightful anecdotes plus some insights into what is happening in indian cricket at present thank you pradeep uh, it's always a pleasure talking cricket with you and thanks for thank coming in and sharing thank you for having me here uh, it's and uh, i believe the book uh, not just cricket it's it's been launched next week it will hit yeah it will be in the uh, bookstores on 11th from 11th december so uh, do give it a read it's it's uh, i've started reading it by the way and so it's pretty engrossing and also the larger social context and political context plus the historical uh, happening around that happens around sport it's it's very richly portrayed here and uh, much like how we try to present present sport at play things thanks for viewing this is a wrap for this episode